And so finally, what are you going to do once you've messed up? Well, first off, I want you to know that you're all forgiven. Everybody makes mistakes. The nice thing about plants is they're extremely forgiving. Given enough time, most of them will grow out of whatever you did to them. And there's different strategies for rehabilitative pruning. Uh, one of them is to just to let the water sprouts grow out and slowly reduce the number. Sometimes you can just pick out some of the worst hydras. If it's a cane grower, you can take whole mutilated canes right to the ground and let new ones grow up and replace them. Occasionally, you can cut a shrub back to a low framework, and sometimes you can cut it clear to the ground and start it over. In general, I say the four steps to rehabilitative pruning are 1. Weight 2. Thin 3. Weight and 4. Thin And the hardest one is weight because all those water sprouts are driving you nuts and every fiber in your body says, if I don't get on top of that soon, it's going to get out of control. But if you do too much too soon, guess what happens? You get more. So I want you to start sitting on your hands and letting the plant grow out. Unfortunately, the in-between phase drives you nuts. I compare it to growing out your bangs. There's the part where they're in your eyes and you can't stand it. A lot of times, the best solution is just to remove and replace with another shrub and just move on. But I want you to know that it can be done. It's easiest to do to your own plant because you can put up with it. It's harder if you're a professional selling this to your client because it is going to get worse before it gets better. But it's nice to know how to do it if they know the difference. Sometimes water sprouts are erroneously called suckers. Suckers are the straight-up ugly shoots that arise from below the graft union or the trunk, and they pretty much always have to be taken off. This, however, is a water sprout that came from a bad cut, and if you only have one or two, it might work to take it off. Summertime is a little bit better time to work on these. You get a little less regrowth. But if you have a tree or a shrub that looks like this, taking them all off is not going to work. If you let them grow, they can turn back into a branch. You can see some of the nice shapely branches on this tree. Those started out as water sprouts, and I just sat on my hands and let them grow back into their pretty arched form and reduce the number of the cluster slowly over years. People always want me to prune to make a branch pretty and curving, and I cannot do that. I can only take out the ones that are less attractive. It's only time that makes a branch curved and pretty. Anything that starts out as a water sprout, or even the new growth on a young shrub or tree, will slowly curve as it ages. I think of it as, oh, the teenagers of the plant world. You know, they're all knees and elbows, and they look very gawky. But as they age, they fill in and become more beautiful reaching maximum good looks, age 60. Anyway, waiting is one of the very best things you can do to get your shrub to look better again. If you have hacked or topped a plant, those water sprouts will be straight and skinny until they reach the size they were before. It's at that point that they start to curve out, fatten up, and put on side branches. Let's talk about rehabilitating sheared mounding habit shrubs. They're often candidates for malpruning because they look like they might turn out okay. A lot of times all you want to do is just put your hand in and rustle around feeling for the worst hydra and cut it off and then do one close by and do that all over your shrub until it kind of eases up 
and then maybe do it again next year and do it again the year afterwards. And that should bring it back to its more natural shape. If you have perhaps had your shrub boxed, as well as uh, if not bald, you can get it back into its more natural shape by taking off the lower branches and getting it back into sort of a more chevron shape. People want to prune standing up with their pruners hitting the outside of the plant because it's more dignified. In reality, if you're a pruner, you're on your hands and knees with your butt up in the air, crawling around the base of shrubs, worshiping the goddess Flora. And this is sort of advanced rehabilitative pruning. I know we started out with the basic basics, but this is the stuff of advanced pruning. This, for example, is a shrub that has been sheared for many years, and it has pretty arching lower branches, and a whole bunch of water sprouts or stick-up or moonshots, whatever you want to call them. And your natural inclination is to cut off all the straight shoots, but we know that doesn't work. We know that for a fact. So what are you going to do to make this plant look better? Well, we're going to do some fairly counterintuitive things, and I'm going to tell you what they are. The first thing is you take off the lowest branches that are touching the ground, and now it looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the outside look more like the inside or the top look more like the bottom. And actually, we're going to make it more uniformly ugly and then let time arch out all the branches together. So now we're going to take off some of the lower or inside curving branches. These are just the ones that my illustrator chose. You could have chosen a whole bunch of different ones. But the trick is to make the lower part thinner. And now it looks like this. And sure enough, some of those straight up moon shots have got to go. The trick is only to do a few and then stop yourself. Let me repeat that. Stop yourself. So pick out two or the three that are driving you nuts, cut them back to a side branch or to a parent stem, and then get out of dodge. This is the finished shrub, and it isn't pretty, but it's definitely less annoying. And in time, all those branches will curve, put on side branches, and you'll have a lovely shrub again. This also works with previously malpruned trees, certainly if they've been put into a ball, and even sometimes if they've been overthinned. This is an example, once again, of the treadmill of shearing above. Occasionally, it comes a time in the course of human endeavor that we want to do a radical renovation. This is some pretty scary stuff, and you should know it's sort of, oh, I guess I'd call it the surgery of the plant world. Occasionally, they die. If you look at the lower left-hand corner, you can see what it looks like. We've cut the plant entirely to the ground. Then we let it grow for a few years, and it's not very attractive. A lot of times it's straight up skinny shoots. But in time, the shrub reasserts itself and reestablishes a nice form. This is the quick way to get your shrub back to its natural shape rather than the slow way. And uh, you kind of have to have customer buy-off before you do this thing. And if you're a homeowner, you need to get spousal permission. But if you have 300 sheared shrubs at a commercial property, it's really not going to work to spend 25 minutes on each one individually trying to unshear it. You would maybe cut down a third to the ground this year and a third to the ground in two years and another third after that and let them regrow to their natural shape. But this is not selective pruning in moderation. No, no, no. This is radical renovation, and you need to do it at a kind time of year. Usually it's spring, halfway between the freeze and the drought, 
because these shrubs are going to be in the hospital and they need it to be nice weather. So let's talk about the cane rowers now. If they've been sheared into a box, sheared into a ball, or generally hacked back, the news is good because these plants renew themselves with branches that we call canes. You could remove a third of the canes for three years in a row and let new ones grow up and turn into replacement canes. You could remove some of the canes to the ground and simplify others, by which I mean taking out the hydras, or you could try radical renovation. And in fact, the cane growers are the toughest of the plant world, and I've never lost one cutting it to the ground. When you prune out canes, you do it like you're regularly pruning, cutting them to an inch or two above the ground or maybe flush with the ground, especially the ones with the worst hydras on them. And you can even move up top and simplify some of the branch ends, removing those hydras like we talked about before. I was at a lady's landscape once, and she had me do a lot of pruning and some transplanting, and she had one of these hacked-on forsythias. That's a kind of a cane grower common here in the Pacific Northwest. And she wanted me to make it small again. It was just full of those hydras, and I didn't want to do it, so I sort of ignored it. At the end, I went inside and I said, um, how are things? And she said, well, you didn't do the forsythia. Go out there and fix it and make it shorter again. And I didn't want to do that, so I did what I would do if it was my, my own. I took out some of the branches lying on the ground. I took out some of the branches heading into the shrubs next door. And I simplified the branch ends, taking out the hydras. When I went back inside, she said, see, doesn't that look better? And radical renovation. I used to just call it renovation pruning, but I had nightmares that people would leave my classes and go home and cut all their shrubs to the ground and tell their wife that Cass said it was okay. So now I call it radical renovation. Here again, think of it as surgery. The difference between radical renovation and butchery is what the guy down the block did as butchery. What I did is radical renovation. And this should not be done every year. It should only be done maybe once every 15 years to get a shrub back if it's been malpruned. This is what it looks like in reality. Here you can see a shrub which was cut pretty much to the ground. See those great big uh, round cuts? That is all that was there when this was cut to the ground. There was not a stick on it. And these are the new canes, and they're probably only a year old, maybe two. The center shrub here, the yellow one, was cut to the ground, or actually to a foot off the ground, one year ago. It's up and this tall in one year. It's attached to the root system of a full-grown plant. So you can actually get a plant back faster than if you had dug it out and replanted it. All these had been squared off by the homeowner, and she wanted them to look natural again. We cut every other one down to the ground. I could have done it all at once, but it would have been too scary. Notice that the yellow shrub, which is a forsythia, is all straight. That's because this is only the first year. In the second and third year, those canes will arch over, put on side branches, and become more graceful looking. Just remember, radical renovation is hard on the health of the plant. You want to always prepare your customer that it might die. But if you don't care because it's just too ugly and something has to happen, you want to try radical renovation before removal. Don't do it every year. This is not a way to keep a shrub short. It's a way to make it look natural again and do it in a kind season. And finally, let's talk about renovating trees and tree-like shrubs. These are the ones that it's saddest to look at after they've been hacked, topped, sheared, or stripped because they are a higher class of plant. 
arborists call trees that have been topped five-year trees or 10-year trees, depending upon how long they think it's going to take to get them back. Rehabilitation for trees is also called crown restoration, especially by arborists. That means tree people. Here's your top tree. Here it is 15 minutes later, starting to look like a mess. This tree looked like the letter Y, and now you can see that the branches have almost reached the size the tree was before, and they're starting to fatten up. This is when we would start with our rehabilitative pruning. Notice the rat's nest down by where the cuts were made. I'm going to thin those out uh, and make this look more like a tree. Here it is after it has been rehab pruned, and it almost looks human again. In a couple more years, you won't even notice it had been topped. I will always see, and arborists can always tell not only that the tree was topped, but how long ago it was topped, just by looking at it. And I should mention that if it is a mature tree and a mature big tree, you also have to have what's called a risk assessment. It used to be called a hazard tree evaluation, and that means you want to get an ISA, that stands for International Society of Arboriculture, an ISA certified arborist to come out and take a look at the tree to make sure that it hasn't become hazardous. Some trees can grow out of this pretty well and be pretty strong, and others can become a hazard. They want to check that the new branches are well attached and that the trunk where they are attached isn't all rotten. And you may need to do this once every five to 10 years to make sure that your tree is safe. It should be noted that a tree cannot be dangerous if there's no target. If this is out in the woods or far away from your house, you're not going to be there when it falls apart. You're going to be inside during the storm. And this small tree just isn't big enough to do much damage if those branches fail, as it's called. The question is, can you do radical renovation for tree-like shrubs? It is the least likely to succeed of the three types of shrubs, but sometimes it works. It doesn't work with conifers. Well, most conifers, that's anything that reminds you of a Christmas tree because they do not have the capacity to break bud and grow back out. But many of the broadleaf evergreens, that's things like a camellia or a rhododendron, or the deciduous plants can come back if you cut them to the ground. This is a tree-like shrub. doesn't really matter what it is. In your part of the world, it might be something else. But it froze to the ground one year and looked just like that. Pretty sad after being such a pretty shrub. But given enough time, it grew back to a little tree or a big shrub and it almost has some of the same grace that the original one did. So if you can be patient enough or just lazy enough, you might be able to get a new tree-like shrub back to its former glory. The mistake that people make when they're doing a radical renovation is they don't go deep enough. They think that if it's okay to cut something to the ground or to a low framework, it must be even nicer to cut it halfway. But this is wrong, wrong, wrong. Half measures avail us nothing. By the time it grows back, it's going to be back up over the window. And also, the top will not match the bottom. It'll look funny. And this is the most important slide of the slideshow. It has absolutely nothing to do with pruning. But it has a lot to do with tree care. Most people have the wrong picture in their head of where a tree's roots are. It's kind of a mirror image of the crown, and that is not the way tree roots grow. Most of the tree roots, which is to say 90% of them, are in the top three feet of the soil, and they don't have that giant tap root. What difference does that make? Well, it makes a lot of difference if you're doing any sort of construction, and I mean 
just something simple as putting in a patio or a drain line or an irrigation system, if you crosshatch the lawn putting in an irrigation system, you will sever every root of the tree and kill it. The key is when you get within the drip line of the tree, you have to be very careful. You don't want to compact the soil by driving on it or storing material on it. And if you're digging a trench, you want to trench under the roots, not through them. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure with regards to tree roots. A tree will die up to seven years later after it has been damaged by construction. 